Hello, thank you for joining. Let's go ahead and get started. My name is Brian Levinson, and I'm here with the Microsoft Commercial Marketplace team, joined by my colleagues Keith Vidal and Julio Colon. And we're here to talk a little bit about Microsoft's Commercial Marketplace, and then really have a bit of a discussion. We'll, we'll open up to, to Q&A in just a moment and spend most of this 30-minute session answering questions and, and having really that discussion about what it means to create offerings and solutions to be made available to customers and organizations all around the world through Azure Marketplace and Microsoft App Source. Uh, we'll start out with just a really brief uh, expectation setting, team introductions, and then we'll jump right into that, that Q&A. Uh, like other sessions that you may have attended throughout Build this week, uh, please use the chat box to ask questions, upvote uh, using the thumbs up icon, uh, we do anticipate that we'll get more questions than we'll have time to answer in 30 minutes. So uh, please do join us in the Microsoft Partner Community. There's a link there in that announcement uh, where we have a forum dedicated to Microsoft App Source and Azure Marketplace, where our team is very active and would love to continue having discussions, share best practices, and answer questions. Uh, but as I mentioned, use that Q&A panel to submit questions and we'll, uh, we'll answer them throughout the session this morning. A, a quick Reminder on etiquette, please be respectful. Uh, do upvote those questions so that we can get to the most popular ones. Um, though, please don't spam. There's uh, there's a couple of us reading, answering questions and writing and in the audio. And so we we will do our best. And of course, we'll, we'll all adhere to the Microsoft Code of Conduct respecting one another uh, and, and our uh, questions. With that, uh, maybe just a very quick introduction to what is Microsoft's commercial marketplace. Uh, when we're referring to the commercial marketplace, this is uh, the platform system and experiences that allow Microsoft partners to create solutions, whether they're infrastructure, platform, software, add-ons, uh, or services, and then publish those into Microsoft's product catalog through Microsoft Partner Center, the portal where Microsoft partners manage their relationship with Microsoft, you create these offerings, you add all the marketing material, commercial details, uh, transaction rules, and then you do create those plans and SKUs that sit side by side with Microsoft products within Microsoft's commerce platform in our product catalog and can be made available to customers through a number of different channels. The ones that we'll focus on this morning or today are Microsoft App Source and Azure Marketplace, the two web stores, Azure Marketplace being uh, the source where you can find and make available uh, IT Pro and developer solutions. It shows up directly within the Azure management portal. In fact, when you click the plus re uh, button to create a new resource, you're now actually in Azure Marketplace. Microsoft App Source being for industry and business solutions and also showing up directly within the Dynamics 365, Microsoft 365, and Power Platform uh, product experiences. And then uh, also these offerings can be made available through the Cloud Solution Provider Program, Microsoft's uh, program and network of 70,000 plus resellers, uh, as well as co-sell program to co-sell with Microsoft sellers. Uh, with that, let's jump right into to some of the Q&A. You will notice on the right-hand side of, of the screen, uh, we have a number of resources where you can go learn more, continue to engage with our team, uh, and even participate in our insiders program where we uh, make available early adopter opportunities and, and feedback forums. Uh, so let's, let's start just right off the top. We are releasing three products one for Business Central, one for Finance and Operations, one for uh, c &E. The two ERP products will integrate with CRM. How can we set this up in AppSource with a test drive? And do we have to pay for any of the hosted instance, incident, instances or the Dynamics licenses for the users who will be test driving our products? This is a great question. And let me uh, actually even just take a step back and explain uh, what is a test drive for anyone who, who may be uh, new to the term. Test drive is, is the ability to offer customers uh, an opportunity to evaluate and experience your product uh, without having to bring all of their own data. There, there are two primary mechanisms that uh, are possible through Microsoft App Source and, and really Azure Marketplace, the commercial marketplace in general, that allow a customer to have an experience and evaluate your solution so that they'll fall in love and, and eventually 
uh, go ahead with that full purchase. Uh, the first is a test drive. This is a curated demo experience where you as the provider pre-populate it with data. You can time bound the amount of time that the, uh, that the customer can spend. Maybe it's one hour, maybe it's five hours, uh, but it's a fully curated um, experience where you can help them see what it would be like when it's fully set up with their data, with their users. The, the second type of a trial experience is in fact a trial. This is a production version of your product where the customer would bring their own data and it's basically a period of time leading up to purchase where they could use it without having to pay. So the two differences here is that a trial is production uh, at no cost leading up to the uh, purchase. A test drive is a non-production curated demo experience uh, that is uh, exactly like production would be, but the customer doesn't need to bring their own uh, data. We do see a tremendous amount of value in test drives, especially around Dynamics 365 offerings, uh, CRM systems where you, you really may need a lot of that data to have that full, that full customer experience. Um, in general, you would need to uh, have that solution hosted. You can put it in Azure. You can put it directly into Dynamics. Uh, we do have um, some benefits that can help offset the cost of that. Otherwise, we do find that a lot of organizations uh, choose to kind of recognize that cost as part of the cost of goods sold or part of their maybe marketing budget uh, to really think of that as, as part of the sales process, uh, generating leads, nurturing uh, that relationship. And something ar around that leads topic is that uh, the commercial marketplace, particularly those two web stores, uh, do generate a lot of leads as customers engage with your offerings. If they're clicking around on the storefront um, and initiate a test drive or request uh, a follow-up contact, we will generate a lead and route that to whatever CRM system you've configured uh, to receive those leads. We support a number of different CRM systems from Dynamics 365 uh, through third-party systems and even just a simple HTTPS uh, endpoint or Azure, uh, Azure table. So it's really quite flexible there in, in how you want to receive those leads, follow up with uh, organizations or individuals who have initiated that test drive, initiated that trial or requested follow-up contact. Um, looking at the next question here, when a customer purchases a solution from AppSource, is it possible to deploy Azure resources along with Power BI and Dynamics applications? This is a good question and I'll, I'll expand this slightly uh, to refer a little bit more about some of these hybrid uh, type scenarios. The first thing that I do want to call out is that while we look at the two storefronts, Azure Marketplace and Microsoft AppSource, as being differentiated based on uh, the persona of the user or the customer, we also do see a bit of a difference in terms of the technical integration. Uh, and I mentioned this because Microsoft App Source does not require an Azure subscription. Uh, in fact, it doesn't require a subscription to any Microsoft service other than having uh, an Azure Active Directory presence. And that may be an entirely free uh, Azure Active Directory instance stood up as part of the purchase uh, flow. And so, uh, Microsoft App Source does make it as easy as just swiping a credit card to make that purchase. So in a scenario like this, we would probably be recommending that you look at a software as a service type solution um, that could then integrate uh, or request um, authentication information for an Azure subscription, for a dynamic subscription, something like that, uh, so that you could have those various deployment models behind it. Um, there are other, other ways to do it, but it would either be multiple multiple offerings uh, or uh, a bit more complex. Uh, Julio, if you have anything to add there, anything you want to put in um, into writing, please do feel free to jump in on, on this one in particular. I know um, you've got some good context on the hybrid deployments. Yeah, Brian, actually, I must have in the question on the chat as well. So um, an example of that scenario where you have uh, a combination of uh, app source and the Azure Marketplace, is when uh, you have a like Power BI. Um, you can create the reports in Power BI for your data that you're going to be selling, but then your data could come from uh, a solution in the Azure Marketplace. So, in other words, you create a backend that will provide your data, you monetize that backend, that SaaS application, and then you provide that data 
as a as a feed to the Power BI application that the customer that you have will be using. That's one of the scenarios that we are seeing. Perfect, and I, I think that also starts to speak to um, some of the other questions around uh, a Teams app that has an Azure backend um, and, and that type of a scenario. I, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the Microsoft 365 offering uh, monetization strategy because this this then does tie in a bit. Um, the the first thing that's worth mentioning is that uh, Microsoft 365 applications, uh, Teams apps, SharePoint solutions. Office add-ins and uh, Power BI visuals uh, were in the past transactable uh, and purchased directly from Microsoft. That strategy has shifted slightly recently in that those are now free uh, to activate by the customer um, and are monetized using a software as a service offering, whether that's a full Azure backend service that can have multiple uh, front end experiences or used as simply a licensing service to activate that, that front end experience. Uh, that's how it's then monetized is using that SaaS offering that's purchased and that uh, Microsoft 365 solution that's free to, to activate and um, integrate with Teams, SharePoint, Office add-ins uh, or Power BI. And on, this, and on that same question, uh, uh, Brian, we have uh, someone who asked about uh, how to get your intellectual property protected in case you have to bring something to the marketplace. And the way to do that is we have a, an offer called uh, Azure Apps. And within Azure Apps, we have something called Manage Apps. And then within Manage Apps, uh, you will uh, we, we get offer a way to deploy a solution to your customer inside their customer suspicion, inside the customer suspicion. And then, um, well, you will say, well, everything is in the customer subscription the customer could have access to it. And that's the magic of a managed app. A managed app will not allow any customer that to look inside the a solution that the publisher builds. It will be completely sealed. And the customer will access that solution only through a specific port that the publisher defined. Um, in the case of maintenance, then there will be a connection which is a service principle that the publisher can use to go in and, and look inside the managed app and service it. Perfect. Um, Hulu, can, can you help me? Um, there's a question here about how IP protection is managed. Um, can you share a little bit of context around uh, how, how we could think about that? Maybe not in a SaaS solution, but something that's deployed directly into a customer's environment? Yeah, that's, a, that's one, uh, the, the question I was uh, mentioning here, where um, the managed app is a way to protect that intellectual property, the customer will deploy the solution in their in their subscription, but they will have access to it. And the oh, publisher perfect. can now protect that. That is very, very uh, useful in the case of like machine learning scenarios. Our partner has spent, you know, thousands of hours to create machine learning models to protect them. And um, they don't want any customer to get access to that model, right? They want to use it, but not to, uh, to, to take it. So a managed app would be that solution where Hey, you can tell the customer, we're going to deploy, you can buy this from the marketplace, deploy in it, still in, all, uh, in your subscription, all the information stay in your subscription, so the personal information stay there. And But the customer won't be able to steal the model, for example. So it's very popular for machine language. Uh, that's the one that is used the most. We're looking at other scenarios where, um, you know, people have some calculations, and math in there that uh, you want to protect. That's that's the way to go. Perfect. And the other thing that came to mind for me is is around uh, some of the legal protections. When you create an offering in Microsoft's commercial marketplace, uh, you as the publisher define the terms of use and uh, that agreement that the customer must accept um, as they uh, activate, deploy, or provision your solution. So, oh. using those terms of use, you can also absolutely. Uh, provide legal protections that that protect your IP and, and are then enforceable. And that, that kind of uh, brings up the, the general topic of how the commercial marketplace operates and what this agency model means. Uh, really at a high level, Microsoft uh, operates the commercial marketplace on an agency model in that we provide the platform for distribution, we provide the platform for marketing, demand generation, uh, and then we also do billing um, and collections for the offer types that are transactable. 
but you as the publisher define the terms of use for your software uh, and then set the price. Microsoft does not change any of that. We are responsible for the procurement relationship and the purchase agreement with the customer. Uh, and then we do do that billing and collections, uh, that purchase agreement, that would be an enterprise agreement or a Microsoft customer agreement. And so you do benefit by leveraging that existing relationship that Microsoft has with the customer. You don't need to fuss around and spend time becoming a preferred vendor with uh, large enterprises or government agencies where that can be particularly uh, slow and, and painful. Uh, but rather just really kind of piggyback on top of that relationship Microsoft has. Uh, and so using those terms and conditions, that legal agreement that the customer must accept uh, between their organization and yours, you can also uh, apply some of those uh, those legal terms of terms of use. We have a question regarding the cleanup. Um, uh, if, yes. if a solution is deployed um, on a customer subscription, um, the cleanup is technically we delete the resource group in which they And I'm going to fuss for just a moment with the presentation so that you I can copy those links uh, into the chat window. Make it a little easier to copy and paste those into a web browser. Perfect. I have another question regarding uh, logins. So, um, so the, the the person who is asking about uh, how do I monetize monetize uh, the plugin? Uh, the way to do that is you build your SaaS solution, um, and then you have a plugin in either Teams, Office, Dynamic, and then you can then have those plugins connecting back to the uh, SaaS solution. Then you would charge your customer in a fixed rate monthly, yearly, or per user. That's how you would connect with them. Yep, that's exactly right. And I will um, share an article that also uh, explains exactly how to do that uh, for the Office add-ins. Um, and, and on a related topic, there was a question here about uh, changing an offering from being free to transactable. Um, Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. Um, there we go. Uh, so there, just put a link in on, on how to monetize those Office add-ins, and that does apply to Teams apps, uh, Power BI visuals, SharePoint solutions, um, and those Office add-ins, uh, and, and also includes, uh, I believe, a link to, to some sample code where you can uh, find best practices around um, that using a licensing service. Uh, on, on the topic of changing an offer type, uh, there, there are two things to consider here if, if you're interested in selling through Microsoft's commercial marketplace, selling through Microsoft using our commerce platform. Uh, the first is that not all offer types are transactable uh, currently, meaning that uh, there are some offer types, software as a service, um, managed applications, and VM images where they can be priced and purchased directly through Microsoft by either adding that solution directly to an Azure subscription and adding it to that Azure bill uh, or swiping a credit card to make that purchase. Uh, the other offer types can be monetized using a SaaS solution as kind of a licensing service uh, or uh, in the case of Dynamics 365, we have the ISV Connect program. Um, so there's, there's that first consideration of is this offer type, is this delivery model one that is transactable through the commercial marketplace today? And then the second part is that uh, once an offer has been published, the commerce model uh, can't be changed on that offer uh, in that we, we do want to protect two things. One is uh, if a customer has already bought it, we don't want to change that, that commercial model on them. Um, so price changes, uh, are, are managed through support cases rather than just automatic updates. Uh, if, if you've configured it for metered billing, uh, we don't change those meters once customers have already purchased. Um, but then the second part is that once that offer has been created, there's either a commerce object or not. And so changing an offer from a call to action of contact me, please follow up and we'll have a conversation uh, to uh, something that can be purchased and deployed directly, 
uh, does require creation of a new offer. Um, it is relatively easy to stop an existing offer. Uh, we see a lot of um, organizations have those two in parallel and maybe they'll shift any of their demand generation, marketing assets, anything that's pointing to that prior offer, they'll point it to the new one, have a bit of uh, transition time, and then uh, stop, sell, or decommission that older offer. Um, we do see uh, a lot more, honestly, a lot more success with offerings that offer uh, include either a trial, a test drive, uh, or the ability to transact and deploy directly. Um, in fact, we see that nearly 30% of searches done on Microsoft App Source or Azure Marketplace uh, are filtered on whether or not the offer includes a trial or a test drive. And that's, that's a pretty meaningful percentage of searches that just automatically uh, uh, exclude, or not automatically, but uh, quickly exclude any that do not offer a trial experience. Ah, Julio, this is a great question that you may be able to, to help me answer here. Um, I want to create an Azure application that deploys resources to multiple regions in a single deployment. Is this possible? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, don't haven't tried that one yet, uh, but you can definitely we support multiple regions. So, and even we support multiple uh, pricing per region. So, yeah, um, I, I, as far as I know, you probably have to uh, deploy it on every region separately. Of, you know the different uh, standards and tactics, but uh, uh, yeah, that's definitely. And when I think about Azure applications, um, it, it may be useful to, de to define Azure application in the context of Azure app, managed app, uh, and and software as a service. And so maybe I'll just take a, a quick step back to provide a little bit of context around this for anyone who's not familiar. Uh, these are each different delivery models that are supported with, with Azure Marketplace. An Azure application is built on top of Azure Resource Manager and ARM templates. Uh, there are two types of Azure applications. Both of these deploy directly into a customer's Azure tenant. The first is a solution template. This is uh, just like an ARM template. It'll spin up multiple resources. Maybe you have a couple of VMs, uh, database, web front end, networking resources. Um, and it, it does deploy that directly into a customer's Azure tenant. You can use that solution template to deploy a custom VM that maybe you've also published into the commercial marketplace. Maybe you've monetized that VM based on cores per hour, something like that. Uh, the second type of Azure application is the managed app that Julio was describing earlier. It's the same uh, scenario as an Azure application, except that you as the publisher, you as the ISV, maintain access to uh, support, update, manage that application, and it sits a little bit like a black box within the customer's Azure tenant. They can see the resources, they can see uh, your access to it, but they don't have permissions to manage uh, or, or configure those resources. That would be you as the ISV. They can revoke your access, they can delete the application, um, but you have, have full control over that, that set of infrastructure, um, which makes it a lot like a software as a service delivery model. You're responsible for management, update, support. Uh, it can be charged on a monthly rate, on a subscription basis. It can support metered billing so that you can monetize really any dimensions, any, any uh, units of, of whatever you prefer to define. The main difference between a managed app and software as a service is that that managed app does run in the customer's tenant whereas software as a service runs in your own infrastructure. It runs within your Azure tenant uh, or the, the infrastructure where you host that application. Software as a service then uh, does allow you to def uh, design it as a multi-tenanted architecture, have that full benefit of uh, economies of scale and, and any shared resources if they're uh, you know, web front ends, whatever, whatever the scenario may be. Uh, and so that, that's kind of the difference between an Azure application and software as a service uh, in, in the way that they work. But the Azure applications are ultimately built on top of ARM templates and deployed uh, quite similar. And, and I did see Julio answered one of these questions in chat that you can use command line or PowerShell to deploy uh, resources out of the Azure marketplace, just like you might deploy resources uh, otherwise.
Yeah, and, and, and along the same lines, uh, we had a question on the upgrades of this. So we do support uh, incremental upgrades. So if you have a managed app that, or an Azure app that is actually very complex, um, you can select to upgrade a specific components of that or to place entire solutions. Um, and on on a related topic in terms of kind of that that first line ticket and support type scenario, um, this is this is a great question that uh, kind of applies applies broadly with the commercial marketplace. Uh, Microsoft uh, is responsible for uh, anything that is the Azure platform, those Azure services, the Dynamics 365 platform, the Power Platform, Microsoft 365 services, uh, as well as the billing. Um, and collections, payment methods, uh, PCI compliance for, for payments, um, we do uh, look to the provider to support um, that software solution. And this can be a little bit of a gray area. If it's a software as a service offering, um, it tends to be a little bit more clear to a customer uh, that they would come to you as the, the ISV for support of that SaaS offering. Uh, if it's something like uh, a VM image and it's a deployment issue, is that uh, based on the configuration of the VM? Is that the image itself or is that the Azure platform? Um, and so in these scenarios, we work very closely with uh, the provider uh, integration with our support teams to make sure that the customer has this pleasant end-to-end -end experience. Um, oftentimes though, what we see is that customers do, do look to Microsoft if it's something that's deployed directly into their Azure tenant because most of the work that they're doing is within their Azure uh, within their Azure environment, maybe within the Azure management portal um, or command line or, or PowerShell. Um, if it's SaaS or once they already have the solution deployed, if they're in the software, then they'll often come to you and, and engage your support team. Um, and that's where we do just work very closely together to make sure that we're providing that best customer support experience. But once they're in your product, once they're in, in your, your application, uh, that's where we would generally uh, have the customer engage you first and then make sure that you have escalation paths back into Microsoft for technical support um, where where needed. Ah, Julio. Oh, looks like you just answered this one. I was going to um, call it out on audio around uh, managing permissions for managed apps um, particularly where that managed app needs access to a data resource or some other resources within the customer's environment. Um, do you want to speak to that one on audio? Yeah, so um, managed apps has a way to uh, manage the permissions. So we have a, like a security policy that you add into the managed app and that will allow you to manage what the customer can access or cannot access. By default, it is uh, the customer should not be able to access. Great, and um, I believe we are at the top of the hour. We didn't answer all of the questions that came through, uh, and apologize if we didn't get to one of yours. We are very active in the Microsoft uh, partner community. There is a forum specifically for uh, Azure Marketplace and Microsoft App Source. Please join us there. We'll be happy to follow up on anything we didn't get to or any questions we didn't answer fully. Um, um, we would love to have you as members of the Marketplace Insiders Program, where we do have early adopter opportunities. We reach out for feedback and we hold office hours. Um, and with that, we hope you enjoy the rest of Build. Thank you so much for your time today, your engagement, and your questions. Thank you. Have a great rest of Build. Thank you.